me show you a quick way to load test your battery just using a meter. It doesn't matter if it's a Harbor Freight meter or anything, but you go ahead and <clears throat> set it on volts DC and then hook your positive, positive, negative, negative. And I'm going to go ahead here and set this to min. So it's going to record the minimum. And when I turn this over on a conventional battery, I don't want to see less than 9 volts. And as you can see, it went down to 4 volts. That battery was just charged, and now I'm down 4 volts, which means I've got a bad battery. If that thing were uh, working the way it was supposed to, that would not go less than 9 volts on a conventional, and around 10 or so on a maintenance-free. So I've got to get that replaced. If you want to check out a previous video I just did, it was uh, on installing this quick disconnect because I was having a battery drain so fast, so much, I was convinced that there was some parasitic draw. So I ordered one of those offline. There's links to it in the video. And ultimately, now doing the test and actually testing the vehicle, it is just simply just a bad battery. I'm going to prove a point here of why I said that the starter on the vehicle is just uh, one of the best load testing uh, tools that you can use here. We have this uh, Mac Tools carbon pile tester hooked up to the battery here. Uh, supposed to do half the cold cranking amp uh, is one way to do this. So you can see it's a 600 amp hour battery. You can look at a tag on the battery. And then, so we're doing 300 amps here. What we do is turn this dial. You'll see here, it'll crank up. And if you notice here, I can't even get it to clamp anymore, but the same number that the multimeter read using the starter of the motorcycle. So way, way cool comparison on that. Awesome. Here's another thing to think about why it's such an advantage to use the starter as a load test is if, if you think of a basic system here and you look at all the connections, you have a battery negative, so you have a connection there, a negative on the chassis, and the positive to the solenoid, solenoid to the starter, and then the starter itself to ground. So if you count those out, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, you're talking about seven other connections you get to load test by just simply using the starter motor and the key and testing the integrity of all those as well versus when you do just a battery on a load tester, you are only testing the integrity of the battery, not all the connections. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you what a good test would look like after I replace the battery here with the new one. But uh, before I start the car and fire it up, I'm going to make a couple notes about battery installation. I love this stuff. I'll put a link below. This is uh, what you spray on after you've connected the battery to give it a little protection from uh, the elements. Good stuff. And then uh, the battery mounting bolt. Uh, I like to use the NICs. And, and don't be thrown off by the same aluminum. This stuff works great on steel applications too because uh, you usually doing steel fastener into an aluminum part but it'll work fine on uh, cases like this of uh, your battery box so that bolt's not so difficult to get out next time so let me go ahead now and fire up the car and let you see what this test would look like using the starter as a load tester on a good battery the record button here i'm gonna get it on the minimum appreciate it you know you can head on over to uh, howtowrench.com and get a membership uh, to support us or say thank you we got t-shirts too stickers uh, as always we appreciate all your support make it a great day and keep wrenching